tomorrow is a big day really because um, we'll find out who's the last relegated team. It's the last day of the season. We could find out who gets into the Champions League. It's a big day. But yeah, if Man U win and Man City draw or lose, then Man U have won the title on the last day, which would be very dramatic. And also if Tottenham, if they beat, if they win and Arsenal lose, then they get into third. And um, that means that whoever's fourth, if Chelsea win the Champions League final, then fourth place, you don't get into the Champions League. It's Europa League football instead. So yeah, I think FIFA, when you play online, it's very like, you sort of know that the other person's there. It's like, when you play against the computer, it's much more enjoyable. I think because it's like there's not actually someone there you know it's like it's not I prefer a lot whereas if you're facing someone it's like they it's like they actually have a mind so they could cheat they could do all that whereas if you play against the computer it's more um, so I film the screen where I'm playing FIFA matches on the camera and then I import it onto the computer and then I use iMovie to like edit and everything and then I at the end I do like a commentating and then I put it on YouTube. Yeah, there's this guy called KSI and he's the sort of reason I started doing it because he's really funny. Oh you've got some ugly things. And then he does loads of Hesky videos. And then now I try and, I, I'm not trying to copy him, but I use loads of his phrases. Like he's got this phrase where it says sweaty goals, you know, and I tend to use that as well, so yeah. Oh, I've got another double. Mario Götze. Keeper makes the save. Ah, goal, 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 Taking on the keeper now. Oh, the keeper's going on a bit of a run here. And well, he's taking on the whole team. Yeah, and he's just smashed it in there. Literally pushing all the players in with him. Great goal. Hello, is is that Caroline? Oh, Caroline, it's Heather. I suppose I didn't get that funeral advert. <laughs> Anything else happening? <laughs> God bless. Bye. <laughs> She's a lovely lady, my agent.
suppose I decided to become an actress when I was in a school play and uh, started off having a part and then finished up directing it because somebody else was ill. They sent me to RADA because they thought I had some sort of talent and I was there one term, didn't get the scholarship, went into rep and so on and so forth. I was born in Singapore in 1927. My father was an uh, ornithologist. He was the creator, the director of the Raffles Museum and Library. And then we were sent home to boarding school, fetched back out again at the time of Dunkirk. And then there was a fall of Singapore. I was 21 when that picture was painted. Who painted that picture? Ella Mollo. And she was married to a white Russian and I seemed to get involved between the three of them. It was all a little bit tricky. Involved? In what way? Well, what way do you fucking think? What happened? He won. But I preferred her. Naturally. <laughs> Rupert? Oh, yes. How would you view your relationship with Heather? Oh God! My relationship <laughs> with my mum. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's quite an interesting one. Sometimes people tell me it's a bit too close. Oh rubbish! But I think they're probably the psychiatrists. What do you notice that's different about Heather when she's working? Oh, she loves to work. I mean, the whole thing, the whole, whole aspect is different. And uh, it's as if her day-to-day -day grind just slips away and she becomes one with her job or whatever she's consumed with. It's wonderful. I think she lives for it. Mm. That's right, definitely. Mm. I think all actors are like that, don't you think? with the shoemaker and um, I was quite interested to to learn. I was working with my father and I learned the trade a little bit. And when I came here and I found it quite quite a good job. It pays my bills and, I come, and people they they intend to repair their shoes quite regularly so it's a good job. In those days I was very young and uh, my father used to take me to his factory and uh, he was working uh, himself and he had other people working handmade shoes and um, it was quite interesting for me because um, it was a craft, it was something that you made out of leather and you know make a nice pair of shoes and when you wear it it feels good. So I, I, I enjoyed, um, I mean, watching him do the work and he taught me because he wa he wanted me to go and study but you know um, the, the, the situation was not really um, I mean right for me to study and I learned it because I wanted it to learn and um, maybe if my father was not a shoemaker I wouldn't be in this trade but because watching him doing it uh, it made me interested to go and learn I 
was uh, try to become like a master in my, you know, in in the in the opera making that I was doing, and I was very slow. I was trying to do everything, you know, slowly and correctly, nicely. But my father was saying that yes, although you're doing a good job, but you're too slow. So speed up a little. And then I I was just taking my time. And then he said to me, I'm telling you, speed up. And then he pushed me, he pushed me, he pushed me. I said, no, I can't speed up. If I speed up, then I'm going to ruin the shoes. And then he said, don't worry about it, you, you just do it. So, and we had like a, a set of 12, 12 pair of shoes every time we finished. And then I start speeding up. And I was, I was on the stitching machine and I speed up. And I stitched, stitched, stitched. And then when I finished the work, my father started doing them what he had to do and he see all the work is so bad and all the stitching was going zigzag and it was not straight <laughs> and then uh, he was really upset and I was upset I said well but that was a big loss for me but from then and then I tried to you know he was good he was he was trying to help me in a way that because you in in the shoemaking trade you have to be um, clean worker and and fast as well because if you if you're not fast you may end up making one or two pair of shoes a day which is not going to get you anywhere especially <laughs> in those days and uh, yeah from then when i came to europe make shoe making